if you're looking at getting started with winemaking, but if you go to a brew shop or you look online and it sounds like everybody's speaking another language. So I thought about starting to make wine. Carboy, tannins, potassium antibisulfate, sterilizers, primary, secondary, fermenter. This is the right video for you. This is the very first thing. I'll just kind of give you a brief overview of everything winemaking and kind of what's called what to kind of break it down for you. First thing you're going to need is a primary fermenter and that is typically just a six gallon plastic bucket. The primary fermentation happens inside of here along with a lot of other ingredients. This is where most of your sugar gets converted into alcohol. At the top of that pail you're going to find a airlock of some sort and this is to keep the good bacteria that we put in there, turning the alcohol, turning the sugar into alcohol from the bad bacteria going in there and contaminating our whole batch and making something that's just not desirable. There's nothing fancy with an airlock. It is exactly just that. It lets air go out and air go in, but there is going to be water or a sterilizer in here that's going to keep everything else from going back and forth. Now, as already mentioned, sugar is one of the main ingredients that goes into our primary, and that's what it gets turned into our alcohol. You might hear of another product called Fermate O or Fermate K or Go Firm. One is a nutrition for the yeast, and uh, one helps the fermentation kind of just go through smoothly. The happier the yeast is, the better the taste of the wine. These are the higher end products. You can also get a yeast nutrient, which uh, along with the fruit, if you decide to go fruit wine or the wine kit, that would already have this in there. But the yeast needs other things to survive, just like our bodies need other things to survive. So that kind of goes in there and that's what that's for. Now you'll also see bentonite being used and bentonite is simply a highly charged particle ion and that helps just to take some of the sediment out of your fermentation it usually goes in the primary different methods for that pectic enzyme this uh, is what takes out like a haze in like a, a nectarine or a mango or a fruity wine it's a pectic enzyme which actually will help break down those cell walls and that will make them settle down and makes your wine crystal clear so that's another clarifying tool that you'll need if you're making fruit wines Hawaiian tannins uh, typically is they're made out of grape skin, crushed grapes, wine stems, and it's just to give you what's called mouthfeel or additional flavor. These can taste sharp, and this is why wines need that age. This helps that molecule kind of marry with the wine and tame that whole thing down and get you like a much more desirable flavor. If you've ever heard of a wine being called green, it's typically because the tannins haven't had enough time to age or mellow and kind of marry with everything else in the alcohol. Then the other two that are kind of, I guess I'll bring them up together. Uh, there's potassium sorbate and Camden tablets or potassium or sodium metabisulfate. They can be used to sterilize and typically what they're used for is if you're adding fruit, as well as boiling that fruit water or that fruit juice and this takes all the bacteria and cultures that's already living in there uh, it kills it off or just puts it into a stasis where it can't reproduce anymore that's what the two kind of do together and this way we can control what we want that fermentation to do <laughs> it's slippery this one is only going to be used after the fact once our fermentation is all done the yeast can no longer reproduce. The yeast that's still in there can continue to work. But this is kind of what we do after everything is said and done. This way, if we want to back sweeten our wine or add sugar after the fact to sweeten our wine, it's not going to start that fermentation back up. So that's the other use for them. You'll also need some kind of a uh, sterilizing product of some sort. You can use a bunch of Camden tablets as well. I highly recommend this stuff, uh, Star Stand as a sanitizer. This is just, what a game changer. This this stuff uh, in high quantities that you need to sanitize with is really hard to breathe and it's hard on the lungs. This stuff just smells like kind of like a dish detergent. It's pretty mild. 
And then one more thing that I haven't mentioned yet is acid blend. Um, I guess a little bit for pH and a little bit for flavor and for keeping the yeast happy. That's kind of what acid blend is for. In some wine recipes, you might just see lemon juice being used instead of this, but uh, that's kind of the purpose of it. pH, flavor. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. There might be more de definitions as well. Keep in mind, I'm also relatively new and learning the wine trait myself. So as you can see by the amount of terms that I just threw at you, most of the magic, everything kind of goes into that primary, and that primary is where the action takes place. So if we have a primary fermenter, why do we need a secondary fermenter? Well, simply put, the six-gallon pill is a better setup than a glass carboy, and this is going to be typically your secondary fermenter, and this is also what we rack to back and forth. Racking is just quite simply uh, the purpose of taking an auto siphon, a siphon that starts itself, and moving fluid from one to the other. If we pour it, it would oxidize or get too much oxygen in there and wreck the batch or foul the batch. But uh, there's too much activity for that narrow neck going on in the primary, so we need that whole wide area to let it, that CO2 gas off and gas out. Whereas if we were to do that in a carboy, we'd probably have a lot of stuff bubbling through here and just making a mess on the floor. So why primary, secondary? That's why. Most of the sugar is converted to alcohol when it goes in there. And the bubbler usually has almost nothing for activity, if not nothing. And that's when we know it's time to go into the next fermentation stage. The purpose of the secondary is uh, kind of twofold. Every time you rack, it lets sediment get another chance to go right down to the bottom. So when you rack again, we're always leaving that sediment behind. We're clarifying our wine. We're letting the fermentation finish. And we're also, I guess, getting into the beginning stages of aging our wine. Now that's kind of why this tool comes in handy. A graduated cylinder and also a hydrometer. This thing does two things. It'll measure the sugar content and it'll also measure alcohol content in whatever batch that we're deciding to make or the potential for alcohol content is maybe a better way of saying it. So this lets us very quickly measure uh, when fermentation has stopped or maintaining a stable hydrometer reading. We know that the yeast is kind of at rest and that's kind of stabilized. Also at the start, we know how much sugar to add because we know what our target alcohol percentage that we're kind of trying to achieve is. So two must-have tools. And then we just need a spoon <laughs> to get it all going. I think that's it. I guess after it's all said and done, there is one more tool that I didn't mention. And that is just this. We hook this onto that same siphon I showed you earlier. And this just has a little valve at the end. We use this to fill wine bottles. So when you depress it, it lets the wine flow. When you take your hand off or when it's not on the bottom, it stops automatically. So you don't have to try to mess with making a, a mess, I guess, all over your workspace. My, in my case, is the kitchen. Hopefully that kind of gets you at least some terminology. So if you're Googling stuff online or if you're looking for wine recipes, that's enough information to at least take you further into kind of what you need to get started and let you know if it's something that you want to pursue. If it is, there's uh, some of the tools that I recommend and there's other videos on this channel on how to use those tools. And if you have any questions about anything else, I am also a beginner. I am still learning. I've made quite a few nice batches of wine and I've also made some terrible batches of wine. But I will share with you anything that I've learned if you ask it in the questions down below.